This podcast includes graphic depictions of true crime cases and may contain explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Saw the Devil. This is Robin. And this is Jackie. And we have a very, very brief Lori Vallow update for you guys today. And a controversial ask. There have been a couple drops in the news this week with the Lori Vallow case, so we thought we would just briefly cover those. And do not fret, we will still be doing the Lori Vallow for Dummies coming out later this week, starting that that journey, as it were, back to the case with everything that we we now know. Back into the time machine, as it were. Indeed. So let's just, before we get into that, let's get our quick housekeeping out of the way. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at We Saw the Devil. You can find us on Instagram at We Saw the Devil Podcast. If you are liking the show, loving the show, or just want to support it and get some cool benefits and goodies while you do, you can find us on Patreon, and that is patreon.com forward slash we saw the devil. Disclaimer too, guys, we have gotten some feedback from you that there are political ads based on where you are running on the show. Some of them are local races, state races, some are for presidential. So there are some for Trump and some for Biden. I would just like to state for the record that whatever ads you're receiving, we have no control over. That is correct. We don't have any control. And that doesn't mean we endorse anybody either or. So let's stay neutral. Right. We are staying neutral. So we do not control those particular ads unless you hear us actively read a targeted one. That is correct. So just wanted to throw that out there really, really quick. Thanks for mentioning that, Robin. I think it's very important that people know. (laughs) Yes. So let's get into it. We did post about this on social media when it happened, but just kind of want to reiterate that a couple of days ago on October 19th, it marked the one year anniversary of Tammy Daybell's death. Tammy died on Saturday, October 19th, and was buried three days later on Tuesday, but an autopsy was not performed. Chad refused the autopsy. Due to the craziness and everything else going on and requested autopsy, authorities exhumed her body on December 11th in order to conduct one. It's sad, and she was a very influential member of the community. Yes, I have not heard a single bad thing about Tammy Daybell in all of this. And we have gone to Rexburg. We've interviewed people who knew her. We have researched this case, gone through court documents, everything else. And Tammy, by all accounts, was like almost a saint. Yeah, she definitely was. And wasn't she a librarian? She, in fact, was a librarian, which brings me to my next update is that Tammy's family, and when I say family, I'm referring to her siblings and parents. They announced the creation of the Tammy Douglas Daybell Foundation to, quote, honor her legacy of service and love of literacy, which I think is so beautiful. I can't think of anything more heartwarming than that. No. The mission of the foundation is to give children the opportunity to love the written word. And that is a direct quote. I personally, whereas I think that is an absolute beautiful, beautiful foundation in order to memorialize Tammy, I am a little saddened that it includes the last name of Daybell. I am a little upset about that. I mean, I know it's normal and natural when people get married, they change their last name and they take on usually the, you know, the woman takes on the husband's name, Mm -hmm. right? That's typical. But this seems so wrong to me. I mean, keep in mind that so far the the autopsy results, I personally believe that the autopsy results are complete and back, but they have not been released to the public. And that's one of the main questions and comments, concerns that most of us have, those of us who are following the case, is that no additional charges have been brought yet. The scary part in lieu of that is that we don't know the autopsy results, so we don't know if evidence is going to be presented during the trial. I wonder if that's going to change some outcomes here or if some more evidence is going to be presented before the trial as well. There has to be something. And one of the most common things that I see online and and the various groups is that this is moving at a snail's pace. All of this stuff happened. Tylee, JJ, Charles Vallow, Tammy Daybell, Alex died. There are so many moving bits and pieces and a a literal wake of dead bodies And so far, we don't have murder charges for anyone. We have conspiracy, conspiracy, concealing a body. We have a couple other things, but no murder, no murder anywhere in here. So, you know, waiting on Tammy's autopsy results to come back or for them to make a move. I did see an interview with the prosecutor 
a generic interview, not one specifically regarding this case, but he was referring to how sometimes clients, right? Like defendants, say like Chad, people like Chad and Lori can sit in jail for like over a year while they're continuing to investigate their cases. So that's actually what's happening here because the prosecution doesn't want to say, okay, let's go to trial. Let's try this ASAP. Then miss the opportunity to either fully investigate or miss evidence, or not be able to include it. What I'm not understanding, that makes sense in theory, right? You don't want to, like, jump on the gun, jump the gun, and not be able to prosecute them for all the crimes they've committed. And you also have time in jail to try and get an informant on some more information. Right. But what I'm not getting is that there's no way Tammy's autopsy is not back. You had Alex's autopsy, you have the kids' autopsies, you have FBI cast, you have all of this evidence that's already been submitted So why haven't we seen murder charges or additional things? It's just people are even finding that weird now at this point. I found the preliminary hearings to be the most odd of all of it, too, because it was almost like a mini trial. And that was even court TV was like, this is so unusual. Yeah. They had so many different witnesses. And it was almost like they were trying to present every little bit of most of the evidence they had just to try and solidify Mm -hmm. even these charges. Well, that was the point of the preliminary trial. Of course. to make sure that that could go to a jury. Without a doubt, right? Is so they could proceed without a doubt. But why do you have to overpresent your evidence? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying right here, right now, that it was this odd. Everyone noted how odd it was. Mm-hmm. So how we are, how the proceedings are going and, you know, with the prosecution and everything else is a little bit unusual. It is. This is a highly unusual case. I'm, I'm sure, especially for Idaho. <laughs> So also, the next day, the 20th, on Tuesday, John Pryor, Chad Daybell's attorney, filed to reset the motion to dismiss charges for November 24th. If you recall, this was initially set for October 29th, literally seven days from today. John Pryor said that the defense team just received the preliminary hearing transcripts and that they need more time to review. Chad's preliminary hearing was on August 3rd and 4th. The defense team just got the transcripts on October 14th. Now, I realize that both sides want to have as much time as possible to review the case. That makes total sense. But can someone fill me in on why it literally took over two months for the defense to get transcripts of that preliminary hearing? And maybe it was just too much writing. I don't know. Either way, Judge Stephen Boyce did in fact approve that filing, and it has now been set for Tuesday. November 24th at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, guys, the ghost of 2020 has struck yet again and something else got moved. Not the sea witch of OOB. Not the sea witch of OOB. And for those of you wondering, John Pryor's filing said, comes now the defendant by and through his attorney of record, John Pryor and Fremont County Special Prosecutor Robert Wood do stipulate that the motion to dismiss hearing scheduled for October 29th to be reset. The basis and reason for the stipulation is because the parties just recently received the preliminary hearing transcript and additional time is needed to review said transcript and prepare their respective briefs. And as I said, that was okayed by Judge Stephen Boyce. Now, don't forget, a lot of you are still talking about, well, that's complete BS that John Pryor is even trying to dismiss the charges. That is 100% normal operating standard procedure because he would not be doing his job as an attorney if he didn't at least try to throw out this wild ball. Especially on the defense, right? Right. He would not be doing his job if he did not at least make an attempt to have the charges dismissed. You, me, and Santa Claus all know that these charges are going to stick. They're not going anywhere, but that's what attorneys are supposed to do. That has been moved. Now, the motion for joinder... That hearing remains set next week for October 29th, and it's expected that Prosecutor Rob Wood, uh, we've actually gone into this in detail, but it's expected that Rob Wood will come out and say, hey, joining these two trials together is going to be efficient, cheaper for the city, it's going to move faster and cleanly if the trials are combined. And if you recall, Chad's attorney has already stated that they do not want a joint trial. They do not want a joinder. Lori Vallow's attorney, Mark Means, however, has more or less said that they just don't care. They'd be fine with it. And so that led to a lot of speculation on exactly how and what Lori Vallow's defense team has up their sleeves. Like, why is she trying to hitch herself to Chad Daybell? Is she going to throw Chad under the bus? Is Chad trying to get away from her? 
Is there trouble in paradise? It sounds like to me that Chad's trying to separate himself from Lori. And he may have that greater implication than she does just because it was found on her, his, his property. Well, it, no, big time. He, he, I mean, it was fun. The, the kids were found in his backyard. So and- I think that he, it's on him to be like, I don't know that heifer. So I, I think that definitely Chad, his only choice now is to pretty much separate away from her. But we will see. That was it. You know, that's, that's still constantly speculated in all the forums, reddits, and true crime underground. Shout out to you guys. I feel like what's interesting is that you have the phone call that took place in the preliminary hearing mm-hmm. between Chad and Lori. And she was kind of running the show, right? Yes. And he he seems completely like, I just need you to tell me how to get through this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're looking in the backyard. Yeah. And recently, too, this week, they've actually kind of refocused on the phone call. A lot of groups. And you can actually hear him say the kids like, yeah. in the phone call. So, I mean... <laughs> but like back to your earlier point as far as the preliminary hearing in relationship to a piece we're going to talk about here momentarily i wonder if melanie gibb is going to be pulled into the picture uh, even more so i i know a lot of people are like well without melanie gibb you wouldn't have <laughs> x y and z right you wouldn't have this and nothing would be presented right now mm-hmm. you wouldn't have any answers i think the answers would have come on their own without melanie gibb to be honest with you yeah and then she almost implicated herself into being a hypocrite, right? In the same note with her in her relationship between her and David Warwick. Mm-hmm. And then you had this other component with Melanie Gibb presenting information and then avoiding the word zombie in the preliminary hearing, yep. which was very, very important and very interesting because it seems like they're trying to leave the beliefs out. Furthermore, we've gotten raked over the coals for being like, we think that Melanie Gibb knows more, but Melanie Gibb knows more. We have to, and people make fun of him constantly. And is he a shady character? Absolutely. But Ian Pulowski, we would not have that document that outlined the group's beliefs if it weren't from Ian Pulowski. Because don't forget, you know, he gave the computer to his ex-wife and yada, yada, yada. And she's, he was supposedly journaling and wrote that entire write-up about the, the, the specifics of the group's belief system. So I personally think that Ian Pulowski has done a little bit more for the case as far as like the details, right? Because that document went into zombies. It went into the levels and all of it. And what's interesting, right, is that beyond going through the portal here, I think what's really intriguing is that, okay, so we have Ian Pulowski's role in all of this and we have Melanie Gibb, right? Yep. And in the preliminary hearing, as I stated, they left out the information about the belief system. But Ian Pulowski wasn't included in the preliminary hearing. Mm -hmm. But Melanie Gibb was so defensive when the defense attorney was sort of probing her and almost trying to break her down. Mm -hmm. But she she tried to frame herself in the public eye as this docile little like kitten in a freaking orchard picking grapes. Yeah. And all (laughs) all of a sudden she's out of Martha's Vineyard and (laughs) and she's like a tiger ready to attack back. And it's like, wait, you just contradicted your own character on the stand. You don't want to do that. But she did. And that's who she is. She revealed her true self when she was under pressure like we all do. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this, I'm like, okay, Melanie Gibb has stuff that she is hiding but i think they're going to include ian Pulowski and try to use that as almost a defense against her i think that ian Pulowski has yet to come in this that's what mostly why people hate ian Pulowski is that he's had the opportunity to come forward he's had the opportunity to do think the right thing i laugh so hard guys i laugh so hard watching him in his interviews i mean he's just completely he is a husband that has given up he is just like completely slinking down in his seat. He looks depressed. I mean, his soul has left his body. And you can tell that, you know, with Melanie Plowski, Melanie, his new wife, um, who also just had a baby <laughs> to, with him. She had her baby. She had her baby. You know, they're being coached by their attorneys. Now, those attorneys, again, John Pryor and others, are the family attorneys for Janice and Barry and Summer, the whole Cox family. Let's take a quick moment to hear from this episode's sponsor. I don't know about you, but social distancing and quarantine have had me really down lately. I can't visit any of the places that I really enjoy, and I certainly can't go to restaurants and feel completely safe. I now do all of my shopping online, but I have to admit, Christmas is coming up and it has been stressing me out this year. 
How do you give yourself or someone else a meaningful gift when you can't even leave your home? The answer is Wild Gallery. They are one of the very few true Native American art galleries with art by artists from tribes all across America. It's one of a kind, original, fine art, and it is both beautiful and thought provoking. Like many businesses during COVID 19, it was forced to temporarily close its brick and mortar location. However, you can actually tour the gallery online. You can check it out by going to their website, which is wild.gallery. And that's wild, W-Y-L-D, dot gallery. As you will see, most of the art is bright, colorful, and in the pop art style. You will absolutely want one of these unique pieces gracing a wall in your home or office. So check out Wild Gallery today and choose your one-of-a-kind piece that explores Native American heritage, culture, and tradition. So I don't know. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a game of what's going on. Who's going to come forward? Is anybody else going to come forward for the defense, the prosecution? We may be seeing a little bit more because Brandon Boudreaux and Melanie Pulowski's custody hearing is coming up in mid-November. And a lot of information is no doubt going to come out of this. Melanie Gibb herself is also set to testify. (laughs) And this is going to be crazy. This is going to be a hot cup of tea. Yeah. And I'm going to be staying back and sipping on it. Because don't forget, Melanie Gibb herself was dispatched to Brandon Boudreaux's home to to see where he was. And the neighbor's like, well, somebody shot at him. She's like, oh, no, really? And that's when she went back to Alex Cox and talked to him about it. And again, we're going to cover all of this in our Lori Vallow for dummies. But all of these dummies are wrapped around each other and their stories don't make sense. And the custody hearing with Brandon Boudreaux is going to have a lot of drama. I think it's going to play into the main trial. Yes. When it comes to the kids and the interactions. And it's very important that we do t- keep an eye on the Melanie Pulowski um, shit show, as it were. I think it's going to give us a little bit of snippets of what's mm-hmm. to come. Yeah, it has to, because as it stands right now, guys, Brandon Boudreaux, someone took a shot at him and tried to kill him at least one time. And, you know, Melanie Pulowski, Ian Pulowski even admitted in his own writing that Melanie Pulowski knew of it, was aware of it. Why she's not in jail is beyond me. Why they haven't actually arrested her yet. So it's going to be crazy. And this is a custody hearing. I mean, Brandon Boudreaux currently has custody of their children. Melanie Pulowski didn't even really seem to care initially. Instead, she ended up going and getting him knocked up by Ian Pulowski, marrying him, and they ended up having a baby, almost like a replacement animal. <laughs> like, they basically went to a shelter and adopted another another baby by having it. Like uh, the, I mean, Those people are twisted. <laughs> Melanie Pulowski, everyone wants to see her burn. Yes. They want to see that witch burn. Myself included. I want to know the true involvement that she does have. Mm-hmm. And the depth of it. And that's why I'm going to keep my eye on what's happening. Yes. I mean, no one in this entire case was as entrenched in Chad Daybell's bullshit from what other people are saying than Melanie Pulowski herself. So the custody battle, guys, it is going to be a war. And that's going to be mid-November, correct? Mm-hmm. Mid-November. And again, everything is moving very, very slowly right now. And I'm sure, like us, you're wondering where the murder charges are. We've already discussed that. But a couple months ago, remember, in August, Chandler, Arizona police said that there could be potential charges against Lori Vallow for the death of Charles. And at that point, when the article came out in the beginning of August, they gave the time frame of three to six months. Well, guess what, guys? That three months is November. So wouldn't it be crazy for the November surprise if Chandler, Arizona was like, surprise, bitch, <laughs> murder charges. Yeah. that. And the thing is to know, and most people actually don't know this unless you live in Arizona or you've worked in law enforcement or anything like that, or someone who poli- pulls police records, is that Arizona has a very odd, archaic system when it comes to their police stuff, mm-hmm. like how they conduct charges and sealed records or records of any sort. They take forever or they just don't seem to exist to other people in other states. Mm -hmm. So it's a a very odd process that we have to wait on. But they have said the the law enforcement in Arizona is that they are turning over every stone and doing a very thorough investigation. It would have been nice had they done that at the time that Charles Vallow was murdered because it would have potentially potentially saved his life, saved his life, Tylee's life, JJ's JJ's life, life. Yeah. Tammy's life. Oh, my God. The, The whole wake of people would have probably not happened. 
But here we are, Arizona. I'm sorry. Being from Arizona, I understand that nothing's perfect, but I would have to say that the... <sighs> Joe Arpaio intensity is all you need to know. Yeah, Joe Arpaio, goodbye. Yeah. I don't know. I just... The ineptitude of the Chandler Police Department. You know, watching the... That was one of the most shocking things early on in the case is when the the, the cam, chest cam footage... Um, the day that Charles Vallow was murdered and watching Alex Cox just chill on the sidewalk. Charles's dead body was in the house just, you know, 30 feet away and he's laughing and talking to the police officer and they don't even check him. They do nothing. I mean, it's just like, oh, okay, it was self-defense. Cool, cool, cool. Well, we're gonna go check it out. And then both he and Lori couldn't get their story straight, you know? So it's just the ineptitude of the Chandler Police Department. It was sincerely disgusting. And last but not least, guys, oh, my God, this is just insane. Mark so, Means. Oh, Mark Means. So yesterday, and by yesterday, I mean Wednesday the 21st, he tweeted. He decided to tweet, and he said, quote, As I prepare the defense for Lori Vallow Daybell, I am learning that persons like Melanie Gibbs and her boyfriend David Warwick appear to have been eagerly involved in more than they let on. If you know something, say something. And then he followed that up immediately by saying, the defense lacks the resources of the prosecution. And then parentheses, state of Idaho, attorney general of Idaho, FBI, Chandler Police, Madison County Sheriff's Department, Fremont County Sheriff's Department, Rexburg Police, etc. We need persons of knowledge to come forward. And then he included a gif of rats (laughs) running. (laughs) A lot of rats. Yes. And I... I'm not sure what in the world possessed this man to tweet. I mean, was he drunk? Is he frustrated? I I do not understand. I do not understand. He's planting the seeds of thought here. He's trying to get witnesses, right? (sighs) Here's the thing. This is insanely unprofessional. Insanely unprofessional. And as Justin Lum actually brought up of Fox News 10... He tweeted a piece of the Idaho Rules of Professional Conduct. And this is the guideline for what's more or less acceptable for attorneys, you know, and what they can and cannot do. Really, what's up for grabs? And if you want to, you can look it up yourself. Again, it's the Idaho Rules of Professional Conduct, and it's Rule 3.6 on trial publicity. So what Justin Lum proposed is, did Mark Means violate this particular rule Or was it protected by one of the rules when he asked for witnesses to come forward? He also tweeted that he was lacking resources. You know, he doesn't have the FBI and, you know, all these people looking. Here's the funny part is that he can subpoena every single item for the most part that the prosecution has. So he's just trying to play the victim role in this? He has subpoena powers. As Justin Lum pointed out, Mark Means has subpoena powers just like the prosecution does. So... I don't know where in the world or why he did this. This is making him look really, really poor. Some are even hypothesizing that this is his way of even trying to get out of this. Like he's in so far over his head. Keep in mind, he's not a criminal attorney. And how would this get him out of it, you think? I mean, if he's not qualified, I mean, what's what's going to happen if he keeps doing crazy crap over and over and over and over again? You know, Lori Vallow later down the line can appeal and say, well, I didn't have an attorney properly represent me to the best of their ability. I mean, this was just watching other attorneys even comment on this entire situation. They're like, no, (laughs) this is just beyond the pale. This is absolutely unprofessional. Do you you believe that this may be a little bit of a stunt to try and buy her time? Yeah, I have no idea. I I mean, there's no time to be bought, really. So he's just incompetent. Yeah. The thing about it is that had all he said is, hey, if there are any witnesses to these crimes, please come forward. Mm -hmm. That would have been like, "Mm," but like acceptable. There's debate currently on whether he he broke that rule. I don't know, guys, but it was it was literally a shock. It was a shock. Not only has he now like come out and misspelled Melanie Gibbs name. Gibbs. Gibbs. He misspelled M- Melanie Gibb. He remember when like not even a couple months ago when he came out slamming the Woodcocks. Oh, yeah. And trying to accuse them of bringing in secret recording devices. Yeah. A wire to make a documentary. Yeah. Like, I don't know what kind of drug or crack that Mark Means is on, but he needs to kind of get it together and reevaluate his life. So he, he stated that the Woodcocks showed up 
with a wire on uh-huh. to record <laughs> audio to make their own documentary. Yes. Well, this hasn't necessarily been disproven, but yet it's not proven. It's just a little crazy. They took it off in their car. They had speaker thing. They're basically working on their own documentary and they took it off in their car. They didn't even go into the courthouse with it. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's just Mark means get a grip. <laughs> Please, sir. Calm down, man. Stay away yeah. from Twitter. You are not you are not our president. <laughs> right? Are you just bored like on the crapper at 3 a.m. and you're like, man, I really need to misspell some people's names. And- <laughs> uh, is it Gibbs or Gibbs? Let me make people think. <laughs> oh, my God. He, he can't even write in one of his regular briefings or motions. He misspells everyone's name. Some days Lori Vallow's, you know, Vallow and her last name is lowercase. <laughs> Sometimes it's uppercase. I mean, it's... Keep people on the edge of their seat, you know? (laughs) Keep them guessing. Hey, keep that that red pen going. So, guys, that is it. I don't know what's going to happen. I truly believe... I feel like we're in the calm before the storm. I feel like November is going to be an absolute shit show. I feel like the world is waiting for (laughs) November and it's like, well, what kind of rainy, fiery death are we going to experience in 2020? Oh, man. Will we make it to 2021? I don't know. (laughs) Will there be even a trial, guys? (laughs) Right? Oh, God. It's, uh, I know the aliens are probably above looking down and they're like, man, the season finale is going to be lit. Why not just send out the pale horsemen at this point? (laughs) Why not just ride into the fiery sun? I saw a news article earlier, and it was like two-headed sharks are now a thing. Someone in India on a boat found a two-headed shark. We've had blood rains. We've had locusts this year. Haven't we even had a sacred lambs born? Yeah. That's like every year, though. Yeah. <laughs> like There's always like a green cow or... God, it's just... 2020 is crazy. Yes, it is. And I just can't wait for everything to get normal. Now we have less daylight and I just want to be able to like not work out in the cold or be in the cold. I don't Mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. I want to be warm. Then, but, we have, then we have Scott Peterson. Oh, yeah. Possibly going, you know, they're, they're reexamining his guilty verdict. Like what on earth, guys? And also my favorite. And I wish I wish all of you. And if you do, if you love cannibals as much as I do, there have been a lot of cannibals in the news lately. Like for some reason, 2020 is just making people eat people. I'm just hungry. <laughs> They're hungry. <laughs> Robin, you're worrying me. You're love for our cannibals. That, <laughs> I know that people are losing their jobs and it's heinously sad and. I'm not going to get political, but we're all in the struggle. We're all in the struggle together, guys. But do not eat your neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) If you get real desperate and hungry, don't go. I mean, there's food banks. Yeah. Or grass or (laughs) graze like a cow. Yeah, something. But don't go eat your neighbor. Okay, we're not quite in um, cannibal holocaust. Yes. Cannibal holocaust. You know, or Shaun of the Dead. We're not quite ready to go to the Winchester just yet. So, well, we know the story behind the Winchester, right? We do. The rifle. Mm hmm. It's true. Calm your titties. So, that was our PSA for this episode. Thank you. Indeed. So, that's it for today. Uh, we will be again coming out with a Lori Vallow for Dummies episode um, tomorrow because that's later this week. You can find us again as We Saw the Devil on Facebook and Twitter. We Saw the Devil podcast on Instagram. We saw the devil.com is our website. And if you love us, like us, want to, th- you know, support the show, you can do so on our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash we saw the devil. Check out our Patreon only episode coming out for Halloween. Yes. Join us on the dark side. Until next crime. <laughs>